Let's earn another Alteryx core certification together. Folks, how are you doing out there in Alteryx land? I am Albert Bellamy, and this is the Alteryx 30-day core challenge. I feel like maybe I should just keep adding words every time. So it's like the Meredith Palmer race for the cure, public 5K, whatever that thing was for my office fans out there. What are we going to do today? Well, if you followed me this far and you've done everything that I've done, you have now earned not one, but two free certifications. We earned a couple of days ago the foundational micro credential, and then we earned the general knowledge micro credential. Now, those are pretty simple tests. And so don't feel bad if you failed them, but they weren't exactly heavy lifting. It was a lot of clickology, a lot of admin, a lot of stuff about the platform. So if you got this far, well done. But now this is where the going gets tough. The tests are going to get more difficult. We're going to get practical applications. We're going to get into some tools where you're actually going to have to think a little bit and take down some problems. Specifically today, we're going to get into the formula tool. And that is going to take some time to get through. Now, I'm a day behind what I intended to do, although we are still ahead of the original schedule. Today, as I'm recording, this is Wednesday the 13th. And so this segment I intended for days 13, 14, and 15 of the challenge. I think it's going to take that much time. Full disclosure, I'm not all that well prepared for this video. I know you're shocked. But what I'm going to do during this video is hash out exactly how long it's going to take for this segment. The segment we're going to do today is core topics. And we're starting to branch out a little bit. So far, it's been a bit channelized as far as we did the input output tools we did the data prep tools now we're kind of getting all over the place today we're going to do date time which is in the parse palette we're going to do formula which is back to the data prep palette and i think that's the final data prep tool we got to study and then we're going to do summarize which is the only one in the transform or sorry that that's the transform palette that we need to get through these next couple of tests and then we'll do transpose and cross tab a little bit later. This period of instruction should set you up for the data preparation micro credential. That is our next test on the horizon. At the end of this segment, we'll do a study session this weekend. And this weekend, you should take the data preparation test. The only thing we need for data prep that we hadn't done so far is formula. And we're going to do that today. All right, let's dive right in. Let's take a look at our learning path. If I can actually get that screen up. Here we go. Share screen. Actually, you know what? Let me put it over here. All right, so I'm going to be looking to the side a little bit. Let me share the entire screen that right. All right, ah, we don't need it that big. Maybe we don't need it that small. Yeah, we're good. You don't need to see that much of me. All right, so here we have our core topics. We've got the path to core certification and we're really starting to come down the home stretch. There actually is only really one more academic section on this learning path. So we are kind of getting down to it. We have done the bulk of the learning now we just got to trim things up that we can that we need to get into each of these tests. Path to core certification. Here's the big video you got to watch. Data in the cloud. And I'm going to write these down because, like I said, I'm not prepared. So data in the cloud is going to be, let's not abbreviate that. Data in the cloud is going to be 34 minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and take them at their word. I've watched these before, did not watch them in preparation for this. But let's just go through all of the non-study stuff. Rows versus columns. All right. So that's going to be, that's just one thing. Cool. We won't even count that. Functions in designer. What are we going to here? Log, some sort of help desk. Okay. That's a help, uh, help article. Cool. Let's go functions in designer, five minutes. And we'll give you 10 to read that one. 
So we're at 45 minutes with just the administrative and intro and educational stuff. That's fine. Let's look into the date time. So we've got a tool mastery article. Let's go ahead and assign like five mins for each. As I'm writing in shorthand, I'm speaking in shorthand as well. That's a big win today. Let's just say five minutes for each tool mastery article. And then you got to try it. Rows versus columns, we already looked at. Functions and designer, we already looked at. All right, so let's leave the formula for last. Summarize tool, you've got an interactive lesson. Five minutes, sum, int, five, what else? Summary processes, this is an article on the help page. Let's go 10 minutes for that. Article 10 minutes, and then you got to try it exercise. So article 10. Okay. Let's look at the formula, because you got a bunch of things to do here. Diving into expressions, I looked at this, that's 11 minutes. Cool. String functions, I'll start writing these down, 11. String functions, eight. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and I will just, when I come back, I'll just tally these up, because I'm... All right, I'm back. So, tallied all that up. It is a good solid hour of videos right here. I'm gonna go ahead and give you that time to, to watch all of those. We are, we were banking on 90 minutes a day. So we've got, if I cut it off at three days, we're talking four and a half hours. So all good. We will grant an hour for the formula videos. So all told, even before getting to the triads, we're looking at probably two hours worth of stuff, maybe even a little bit more. Okay, so let's get into the triad exercises. So the first tool we're looking at is date time. Now I might not take you through this whole thing because date time may get just a little bit tedious. We got six triads here. So the first one says, change the date to a string as it appears in the target text input tool. And here's what we're working with. We have this right here, which appears to be in proper Alteryx date format. And this right here, which is proper Alteryx time format. So we check our metadata. First of all, let's run the workflow, silly boy. About that. All right, let's check our metadata and we are in date time format. So we need to change it to a string as it appears in the target, click off metadata. And we need, what's that? Month, day, year, month, day, year, and the time with forward slashes. All right, so date time, Three things you got to work out with date time. Which direction are you going? Are you a string now? Are you becoming a string? And then you're going to make a new column. It's not a big deal for this. And then the third thing is you have to find your uh, format for your string field. Okay, so we're going date time to string. Select the field to convert. There's only one field. Easy. Specify a new column name. Don't worry about that. And then the format for the new column. We need, what is it? Month, day, year hour, minute, second. All right, so there's our conversion. And we look at the output anchor, 101, 102, 103, 101, 102, 103, and the time looks correct. Okay, so there's the first one. Let's go ahead and go to the second one, change the string to a date as it appears in the target date target text input tool. Okay, so now we've got a, what I call a weirdo date, 01 January, 2019. And we wanna change it to proper Alteryx format. Pull the date time down. What direction are we going? String to date time, because we're in weirdo date format. Select the, the field to convert. It's the only one there. Date timeout is fine. And what is our format? So we have DD, the, the two digit date. We have month spelled out. and we have the four digit year. So I can already see that we don't have any format that matches that, so we've got to do a custom. So we're gonna do it in the date notation. DD space month comma YYYY. Y, y, y. All right, let's run that. And it works, we're in Alteryx date format. 
cool. I don't think, I think I was probably supposed to go down this row. Oh, well. Um, change the date to a string as it appears. Okay, so this string here, day fully spelled out, DD, month fully spelled out, four digit year. All right, let's try this one. And then I think you probably got it. So we are going date time to a string, field, column name, language, day, DD, month, Y, 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 Y. That looks like the right one. Look at that. It came right up on it. Okay. It's kind of faking the funk here. Tuesday, 01, January, 2019. That looks like the target. All right, let's just skip to the last one. You can figure out the other ones on your own. Let's just see what's this one. Okay, change the string to a date as it appears in the target text input tool. All right, this one's weird. Check it out. So we got 2019 colon 01 colon 01. Then we got three dashes, 12, 34, 15. Hmm. Okay, so we're really gonna have to get crazy with the, the custom here. And we're converting it to proper Altrix format, neato. You might need help on this one. Hmm. Okay, we'll see. So everything here, we're going string to date time. All of that's good. We have to do custom. Let's go year, 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 colon, month, month, colon, day, day, one, two, three, hyphens, and then HH, pipe, MM. SS. Let's see if that works. All righty. Who needs help? That looks like proper Alteryx format. We got it. All right. So that was the hardest one. I think you can fill in the other two. No big deal there. We will allocate 15 minutes for each of the try it exercises. So let's cut back over. All right, so try it on the date time is done, rows and columns, functions, and expressions. Let's go to the formula try it because this one is going to be the bear. As a matter of fact, let's leave formula for the last. Let's just do summarize. Okay. So, summarize tool, you're summing stuff down the column. So, just think you're adding up the different row values and you're going down the columns. If you want to add across, that's the formula. So, right here, we're giving you the math steps to go both directions in the uh, in the database. Almost said spreadsheets, not a spreadsheet. All right, let's go. Date time, you're done. Summarize, you're up. How many do we have in summarize? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's look at our data set. Let's run the workflow. Find how many unique agencies there are in this data set. Whew, this one's taking a while. Why are you, ooh. Why do we have messed up? Uh, okay. Cool. All right. We may have some data issues here, but find how many unique agencies there are in the data set. Where is agency at the end? Alameda County. We got 400,000 records. That's silly. All right. How many unique agencies are there in this data set? So we're going to bring down the summarize tool. And the summarize tool is better at uniquing than the unique tool because the summarize tool doesn't give you all the associated data with the unique tool. Um, unique is kind of a pain in the butt that way. So let's go. We want to highlight the agency field because that's how you pick it. So top pane is the fields. Highlight the agency field. And we are going to group by. And that is all we're going to do. Let's run it. As a matter of fact, let's add, we'll, we'll containerize it when we get done. So we're not running this massive. As a matter of fact, let's go. Let's make some containers here. All right. I'm going to put you two in a container, put you two in a timeout. Add to new container, chunk, timeout. You two as well. Add you to another container. China. Okay. The reason it took so long is because we're feeding in 400,000 rows of data times one, two, three, four, five inputs. I'm not sure why they would set it up that way. Other than just to say, look, summarize, it can clump a few hundred thousand rows of data. Anyway, 
I don't know how impressive that is. All right, let's run it. Now it should not take quite as long. There we go. Definitely is bringing in some weird conversion errors. Aggregate is not a valid number. Get it. Okay, so we have 54 unique counties. I don't see any nulls. Target says 54. Okay, so here's what we can do. I, I grew by it because I wanted to see them. Let's go count distinct. And then it's just going to give you the number. Got it. There's a bunch of conversion errors. All right, so there you go, 54. Neat. All right, let's box this one up and turn the container off and just scooch it out of the way because it annoys me. Okay, let's get to this one. We have here, find how many times does each agency appear in this data set? Cool. Um, let's go ahead, summarize. We're going to agency, group by, and then we're gonna count. Now it doesn't actually matter, as long as there's no blanks or nulls, it doesn't actually matter what you count. So you're grouping by the agency, you could literally count any other column and it really won't make a difference. We'll just go ahead and count agency as well. Okay, and we got the answers right there. Let's go ahead and run it, see what comes up. That's neat, those conversion errors come up in every data input. <laughs> okay, so 9680, 416, 3137, those look accurate. Rounds complete. Bing, you're out of here. All right, next one. Find the mean and the median total pay for this entire data set. Need to check your data type? Question mark. I think you need to check your data types. Everything's screwed up in this. All right, mean and median total pay. Let's go to metadata. Total pay. Hey, it's a V string. Look at that. Okay. So we need to change the data type. We bring down the trusty select tool, the master of changing data types, although there are other tools that can do that. Total pay and benefits. Yeah, I see decimals. So let's go ahead and bartender, make it a double. Okay, so now we can summarize and do math things with it because you can't math with a string, just won't work. Um, yeah, I really wish I could see the counter on this recording. Oh, well. Yeah, hide that. Hmm. StreamYard, sometimes you annoy me. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. I had to turn off the brand banner. <laughs> StreamYard hijinks. Okay, so find out what is the mean and median total pay for the entire data set. Cool. So total pay, numeric. Oh, I did total pay and benefits. Silly me. Just total pay, double. We'll leave total pay and benefits as a double too. This is how you know I didn't rehearse because I'm sitting here making mistakes. Okay, total pay, numeric, average, and median. Cool. No whammies. So dumb. I should have just deleted all of the other data inputs. If I was smart, I would have just made one data input so I could fix all of that and not have to see the stupid conversion errors again. Average total pay, 62,049 and something, something. Median, 54, triple seven. What say you? Same numbers. Done deal. Add to new container. Shut it down. Gordon Ramsay. All right. Last two. Find out what is the mean and media total Mean and median total pay for each agency. Need to check your data type. Yes, I do. Matter of fact, I'm deleting you. I'm just I'm just gonna reopen this last one. Let's pull that out of there. Turn this one back on. And yeah, for each agency. So we can just modify this one here. So we found the mean and median. We want to find by agency, easy day. Just group by agency. I'll run it again. 
We don't need to change data types again. We know how to do that. We're smart. Do, do, do. Happy noise, happy analyst. Alameda County 61967. Alameda County 61967. That looks valid. Okay, let's put that up there. Now you're shut down. Last one. Count the number of times each job title appears in each agency. We've got the number right there. So bring the summarize down. Group by agency. Usually what I like to do with summarize is look at the instructions or whatever, you know, stakeholder gives you directions or something. You look at it and you say, all right, what are all the pieces of information I need? Identify that first and then figure out what you need to do with it. So what pieces of information can we, can we identify here? Agency, we're going to need. Job title, we're going to need. And then we're going to need to count something. Easy enough. So group by agency, job title, and then we can, what? Group by job title and then count the job title. Sound right? Target is 28,064 records. Okay, I guess we're going for total rows here. Weird. No whammies, let's see what happens. Conversion errors, fun times, that took a little while. So 28,064 records, nailed it. Cool. So that is the summarized try it. Make sure you try that at home. I went through all of them. Sorry, I made my workflow into such a circus. But it's time to go on to formula. Okay. What do we have with formula? Yeesh, we've got a lot here. All right, let's start working fast. Uppercase, the customer segment. Okay, we're starting off with real toughies. Customer segment right there. So we're going to, two things you can do with a formula. You can make a new column or you can modify an old column. So with this first one, uppercase customer segment, we're gonna modify the old, cust old, old custom, the old column. Let's modify customer segment. It's currently all caps. Let's go, or it's not all caps, it's title case. So let's go upper, uppercase customer segment. And there we go. Run it, make it so. Small data sets this time. Thank goodness for small favors. And we see that it's now uppercase, whereas on the go to the input anchor, it was title case. So I've made it screaming all caps. Neat. What's our second one? Create a new field called full name. In the new field, concatenate. It's one of my favorite words. Isn't that a great word? Concatenate. In the new field, concatenate first name and last name together. Shall do. So what are the two things you can do with a formula? Create a new field, modify an old field. Now we're gonna create a new one. The way you do that, go to add column, full name. Let's do it. Concatenate first name and last name together. So concat, oh, okay. So there's no concatenate in formula, had a slight brain cramp there. All you do is you add the strings together. So we're gonna go first name, Plus last name. Come on, Bell, let me get with it. And let's run that. Cool. So our new column is full name. Maybe we should have put a space in there. That's what they did there. Okay, easy to modify. Plus many quotes. There we go. Plus last name. Now we run it again. <laughs> And we've got the space. Gene Smith, Julia Carrera, Linda Trevino matches the target. Done deal. What's next? Using the count words and get word function, create a new column named suffix that contains the address suffix, drive, way, street. Hmm, neato. Let's look at this one. I don't usually deal with string functions too much. Okay, create a new column, you know, suffix. So everything is at the end. Let me think about this. All right, there we go. I paused it for literally 30 seconds. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, so we're gonna make, we're gonna make a new column called suffix. First things first, take it down, bye, bye, bye. 
new column named suffix in accordance with the directions, in accordance with the prophecy. And we are going to, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna work from the inside out, just like if you made one of those horrible nested Excel expressions. I don't like making that reference much, but okay. So we're gonna count words. First thing we're gonna, Jesus. Don't do that to me. Count words, that. All right. And the string for counting words is gonna be our address field. Done deal. So that's gonna give us the number of words in each. Now that's gonna vary. So we got 376 South Jasmine Street, that's four words. Obviously that's our data preview right there, the first row. Four words in the next one. Next one has three. So whatever the maximum number of words, you can see that the street suffix is that last word. So the value that comes up for account words is going to be the last word. That's the one that you want. So we're gonna put in get word, come on word and our string well our string is going to be uh, address and then we need a comma and then our word position is going to be count words but position is zero based so we need it to be count words minus one all right so here is your let me zoom in real quick because that one took some thinking even for me like I said, don't deal with string functions much. So working from the inside out, count words is gonna give you the, the number of words. Now that is base one, because you can't have zero words. So it goes one, two, three, four, but for get word, you're working on position. Position is base zero. So there is no position four in a four word string. The last word is position three. So you had to subtract one. Count words minus one is going to give you the position of the last word in the string, which is the street suffix. Let's run it and see if it breaks. Okay, look at that. Street, way, circle, street, way, looks good. Done on that one. I don't know why there's a space here. That's weird. It's throwing me off a little bit. All right. Next one, we wanna rename some of the customer segments in our data. Using a conditional statement, set corporate to core, home office to home, and anything else to other. One second, okay, momentary er interruption. Let's do this. Formula, pull that down, and we are gonna make a conditional here. And we're doing it, we're gonna modify the existing column. So customer segment is gonna be the column that we modify, and we're gonna do if, now, with my conditionals or with anything that has kind of a multi-clause function, I'm always gonna drop every operator down a line because it's just easier to read. And that's just, just kind to the people that have to take over your workflows. So, we're gonna do an if then statement. If uh, customer segment, equals corporate then core. All right, these are all caps. Then my typing is awful today, core. else if I just made it a multi-conditional statement just because that's how I roll. Just cut and paste this. Else if customer segment equals home office then home. Else Other and if. Forgot I was on caps lock. Other and if. And let's run it, see if it breaks. All right, got it. Cool. Matches the target. So let's zoom in on that real quick. There we go. 
repeats. So that's a conditional statement. And so you've just changed a couple of different values there. Okay, let's keep going. I'm not sure if I'll finish this. We're half an hour already. So I may wrap this up and just leave it to your own devices. Maybe I'll do a supplemental video uh, in a day or so, but create a new column named total that calculates the summation of the item and how much sales tax is due on it. Note tax is displayed in percent. All right, base price, sales tax, easy day. Let's bring down a formula. Let's make a new column, total. Oop, still in caps lock. All right, so we're gonna go base price times sales tax divided by 100. Let's make that bartender make it a double just in case. We got a math with it going forward. 43.848 for the first one. Nope, that's wrong. Summation of the item and how much sales tax is due. Yeah, see, reading is fundamental. Okay. So that's the sales tax. Probably a simpler way to do this, but I'm always about harder, not smarter. Plus base price. Now let's run it. Cool. So we got 1555848. Yeah, well, they rounded it to two decimals, but all good. All right, so that's the right answer. Interruption. Brief interruption there. My son just came home from work. So I'm going to uh, wrap this up here in a few minutes so we can go watch Ahsoka. We're already a day late on that. All right. What else we got? Title case, first name, and last name. You know what? I'm confident you can take that one down. Not even going to mess with that. Using the count words function, create a new column named count that contains the number of words in the address field. Easy enough. Let's knock that one out. All right. We're making a new column. It is called count. We are going to count words. If I could spell or type, that would be great. And it is address. Run it. I guess that set up this one. This one we're supposed to go zigzag. It felt like the summarized one you were supposed to go down the rows. All right, count four, four, three, three. Looks correct. Some zip codes have nine plus digits. Use the left function to overwrite the zip field with just the first five characters. That's a useful exercise. Let's do that one. All right, where's my zip code? Right here. So we can see the zip code is problematic. Oop, zoom fail. Let's go. Zip code is problematic. Some have just the five numbers and some have that annoying suffix. Let's get rid of the suffix. We're going to modify the zip field. We're going to go left. String is the zip field. And the length is going to be five. Let's run it. Bang. Our zip code field is nice and clean, no annoying four digit suffix. What is that thing even for anyway? Nobody knows, nobody knows. Let's continue. We want to create a new field called target area. Using the EIF function, it's a fun one, set any customer in the city of Denver to in target. All other customers should be out of target. All right, I'm actually a little rusty on my EIF function. So let's figure it out. New field, target area. Let's take this one step at a time. Target area. Used to mean something totally different to me when I was an artillery battery commander. Anyway, if Boolean. How do I do this again? Let's see if we can. If Boolean x, y returns x if Boolean is true, else returns y. OK. Um, yeah, I know it's a conditional, but okay. If function, any customer in the city of Denver. All right. Um, I, if city 
equals Denver, all caps, then the true is in target, and the false is out of target. Let's run it, see if it breaks. Bing, bang, boom, happy chime, in target, out of target, looks good. Case is a little weird, but okay. Yep, and we match the target. Last one, create a new column that says formatted total. Use the two string function to add commas, set the number to two decimal places, and concatenate a dollar sign before the values. See the help files for the secret settings. Secret settings, okay. Two string function to add commas for what? Formatted total. All right. So what do we got coming in? Okay, so they've done these those calculations over there for us. Neat. Okay, so we've got to add a comma after the thousand separator. We've got a pad. Set the number to two decimal places. All right, let's take it down piece by piece. All right. Formatted total. Let's go two string first. Um, It's total, and the number of decimals is two. Okay. Run that and just see what that produces. This is always good when you're making like a nested function. You just want to iterate a couple of times. Cool, okay. So that did that. Now we can insert the comma. Hmm. See the help files for the secret settings? Where are the help files? Yeah, well, those are, the, oh, okay. Yeah, it shows us. All right, how do we get that comma in there easily? Is there like an insert function or something? All right, I'm muddling now. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna peek real quick, just for the sake of time. Okay, that's weird. How do they get the comma in there? Just do that. No. Hmm. Go dollar sign plus two string total two. So what was that comma one there? That's weird. I guess that was the secret settings. Am I right? I will have to look that one up. I did not know that. Neat. So the comma one after two string for the number will put commas in it. Did not know that. Let's see if that comes up. Ah, there it is. Yep, it comes in. Thousand separator and then decimal separator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to go to the help files. You just have to hover over the stupid uh, description there. All right. Well, I cheated. Bad on me. All right. So though that is the formula. Try it. Neato. Let's take a look at the practice exercise. That's the last thing. So functions, formulas, we did summarize. And then practice exercise, that's all we got left. Yep. Okay, combine the customer information in start 3.1 with the order details. Ensure both the order date and ship date columns are formatted as date data type. So in start 3.1, we have customer ID, store number, customer segment, name, address, city, and zip. This one we have, okay, so we've got customer ID is pretty much the only common thing. 
All we need is order ID, total, total saved, and days to ship. That's our final state. Huh, okay. But the common field is customer ID. So we need to do a join. Combine the customer information 3.1 with order details. Ensure both the order date and ship date columns are formatted as date data type. So let's join them. And we can reformat dates in it. But we're going to join on customer ID. That's our only common field. We'll delete the right one. And then we'll go back and clean up which of these columns we actually need a little bit lighter. Order date and ship date are formatted as dates. Order date is, ship date is not. What form is ship date in? Weirdo date. All right, so let's fix that. Drop a date time tool in here. We've got to change ship date from string to date time. Feel we're converting is ship date. Let's go ship date form. And our weirdo date is month, day, year, forward slashes. Month, day, four digit year, forward slashes. Let's run it, see if it breaks. Bing. All right, so we have ship, ship date form. We can go ahead and get rid of the old ship date here. Ship date form now becomes ship date. And let's go ahead and move it to where the old ship date was. Nope, back down you. There we go. All right, so we've recreated that and we've done all of that first stuff. Now, next instruction. Find the number of days to ship after the order was placed for each line item. Okay, order date, ship date. Also calculate the subtotal. All right, so we need a formula. Got it. Days to ship. Let's make a new column. Days. Oh, wait, what do they call it here? Days to ship. Look at that. So, days to ship. Now we're going to use a function called date diff. Type in diff and it'll pop right up. Date diff, date one is going to be your later date. So that's going to be the ship date. Date two is going to be your earlier date, which is going to be your order date. And our unit is dates. Okay. And all for the first one. Interesting. All right, let's run it, see if it breaks. Okay, so we got five there and we've got positive values. So we ordered it correctly. Cool, cool, cool. Number of days to ship after the order was placed for each line item. Got it done. Also calculate the subtotal for each line item. Discount and shipping are flat costs, not per quantity. What are we talking about here? Unit price. Where's the quantity? Customer ID store number. Unit price, shipping soft, quantity. All right. So new column. And it's going to be called total. Neato. So new column called total, Hotzel, strong typing. Failing, failing. Get out of there. Okay. So total is going to be, let's go quantity, ordered new, times unit price. Oh, unit price has issues too. Let's go unit price. Unit price is a V string, silly thing. Let's go unit price, it's like two digits. So let's call it a double. Quantity ordered new, also a V string, silly thing. Quantity ordered new, let's go integer 64. Discount and shipping. Shipping cost should be a double. Discount, double. All right, now we got it. Now we can math. You can't math with a string, just won't work. Quantity ordered new times unit price minus uh, discount. I can see it because my giant cursor in the way. Discount plus 
uh, shipping cost. And then that output will be a double as well. Got a null for the first one, but sometimes that clears when you run the formula. Total cost, 53.58. What does the first one say here? 53.58, nailed it. And then total saved for each order. Total saved. Is that discount? Discount 328, 545. That's something more saved. How did they save more there? Or is that just reordered? 328, 1247, 11906. How do they have, only have 10 records? Annoying. Combine the customer information, ensure both the order date and ship date columns are formatted as date, data type. Got it? Here we had six records. Oof, we had, a, we had a dodgy join. What we do here? How do we get 15 records where they only had 10? Hmm, do we have any duplicate records? I don't see any. Yeah, so these are order details, and these are just our customers. We only have six customers. So it should have joined fine. All right. I don't know why we have 15 and they have 10, but total saved 328, 545, 168. Seems like there's instruction missing here. Find the total cost for each order, the total save for each order, and minimum days. Find the number of days to ship after the order was placed. Calculate the subtotal for each line item. Doesn't seem like there's a summarize here. Okay, so I guess we've got to group the orders. Just had to pause to take a look at this for a second. So let's go ahead and deselect everything in here that we don't actually need. So customer ID, store number, customer segment, name, address, city, zip, don't need any of that. Product SKU, don't need that. Discount, unit price, shipping cost. Order date, I don't think we need. Ship date form, or yeah, ship date we do need. Quantity ordered new, we need. Order ID, order priority, we don't need. All right. Let's go ahead and group by. Hmm. Okay. Let's go discount, unit price, shipping cost, quantity ordered new. We're going to sum all of those order date, ship date, and order ID. We're going to group by. Let's see if that gives us 10. Doesn't it gives us 14? Hmm. Let's delete that. Get this right here. Let's summarize it after. And let's go discount unit price, shipping cost, quantity order, oop, discount unit price, shipping cost. Quantity order, not that. Discount unit price and shipping cost, some. Quantity ordered, really think. Quantity ordered new, some. We don't need the dates anymore. Order ID and days to ship, group by. See what happens now. Still got 14.
Interesting. All right, I got it. I got it. Reading is fundamental. Days to ship, minimum. Find the minimum days to ship any item, line item within each order. Let's go ahead and run it. See if it aggregates 10 items, 10 records. OK. We're good. All right. So we actually didn't need some unit price or shipping cost. What do we what do we make here? Total, right? We did need some total. So let's go some total. We don't need unit price or shipping cost or quantity ordered new, discount order ID, days to ship. And then what do we have? 53, 58, 163, 38, some discount, 328, 1247, numbers match. Okay, done deal, iterate enough times, reread the instructions three, four, maybe 10 times, and you're good. So we've got the right answer there. That is the practice problem, and that is absolutely something that you can anticipate seeing on one of these exams. Look at this problem here, and probably the only tool that we're not gonna see, well, the data prep test, you're not gonna see joins or uh, daytime, but you are gonna see, summarize, you are gonna see formula. All right, let's talk it out. What is the total jumble of time we're talking here? I've got 45 minutes, an hour, two hours. Let's call it three hours for all of this and the practice exercise. So you got three total hours of work. That is a good amount of work for three days. So days 13, 14, and 15, we have just summed up. What do we do here today? Let's recap. We have gone through the path to core certification to include the date time tool, the formula tool, and the summarize tool. What are we gonna do next time? Well, probably Saturday uh, or maybe Sunday, we are going to study for the data prep exam. Here's the tools on the data prep exam. Um, I lied, summarize is not on there. So you need the input and output tools and you need the data prep tools to include formula. Summarize and date time, We'll get those on the next test. Once we're done with this test, we are halfway done with the core certification, okay? Let's close that out. What is our next test? It is the data prep credential exam, and I aim to take that on Sunday. Folks, if you like this content, and I know we've got a handful of people that are, uh, that are following this series and doing these tests, please subscribe to the channel like the video, tell me what else I should do. I have uh, plans in place to do this with Tableau in November. Confirm or deny that we had a poll that a lot of people voted for Power BI. I'm not super comfortable with Power BI, I've never used it. I know that it's very popular, it is open source, so obviously it's gonna be popular, but uh, I'll look into it. Maybe I'll see if Pact will send me a couple of books and, and I can start working on it. All right, well, that's all we got for this. We've burned up the better part of an hour with this video. Folks, all I got to say is follow me and I'll make you a genuine Alteryx hero just like me.